I wouldn't advise you to buy shares in your child's name. Yes, it is possible. If you want to do it, go ahead and do it. It's your money. But I would. Hey guys, welcome back to Financial Literacy in Uganda. Zena Manja Miriam. Guys, Tandikana Kwetonda, I'm extremely, extremely sorry. I've taken this long time without uploading. And yeah, have, um, so many things have been happening. I was sick and then so many crazy things have been happening in the background. And I really failed to get time to shoot this video. Yet I had promised, yes, that I'm going to keep them back to back. But please bear with me. I'm sorry. But now that I'm here, let's just finish this series and get on with our lives, yeah? So again, today, um, I understand the channel is called Financial Literacy in Uganda, but then someone requested that I try to include English. So today, um, I'm going to use more English than usual, and then you, the subscribers, will tell me whether you want me to continue in English or whether we can keep rolling in our Uganda as usual, yeah? So please let me know which language you prefer and yeah i'm more comfortable to switch whatever i think will be of help i'll be more than willing to accommodate now getting into today's um topic we're talking about the frequently asked questions in the about the mtn ipo i got a chance to compile a number of questions if you see me looking this side it's because i lined up the questions here so i'm going to keep turning but yeah, I, I managed to collect a number of questions from mainly different social media sites and this is because um that's where there was a lot of interaction between mtn and then all the different brokers so i managed to pick some questions that people are asking yeah, and i thought we should discuss them in detail so that is what we're going to be looking at today and we're jumping straight in. Our first question is, what is an IPO? So before a company gets listed, so many things happen in the background. Before even the public realizes that, well, this company is going public. Of course, they apply and then there's underwriting process and all those uh, different kinds. But an IPO is just a stage when a company is getting listed. And this is a stage where they call on the public to subscribe to their shares and after this time period, then they're able to get listed on the stock exchange. Anything beyond that is a lecture and I'm not giving a lecture. So an IPO is the first stage where the company comes to the public and requests individuals to, to subscribe to their shares. Just that. Yeah, jumping on to our next question. Um, the next question is what are the timelines of this IPO? So basing on the publications that I was able to pull the timeline of the IPO, um, 11th October to 22nd November. So by the time I'm shooting this video, it's just 10 days to the end of the IPO. Yeah, you still have time to make an informed decision. And then after the IPO, the company in question, which is MTN, is going to get listed on 6th December 2021. Yeah, so those are the critical dates that you need to be aware of. Our third question is, what is a share? You know, people kept asking me about chechi shares, chechi, but well, <laughs> so a share is a unit of measurement. Just like you see um, when we're measuring distance and we're using kilometers, meters and all those sorts of things, a share is a unit of measurement of ownership. So if a company is listed and um, say they have a total holding of 100 shares and then an individual has 10 shares in that company, we say you hold 10% of that company. So we only measure your ownership in terms of shares. That is what a share is all about. It's just to show how much you hold of a given company. Yeah, jumping on to our next question. I'm sorry if I'm appearing to rush through this, but we have so many questions and I want to make this video as short as possible. And then the next question was saying, can I buy shares if I'm outside Uganda or if I'm not Ugandan? Yes, you definitely can, um, as long as you open a CSD account. And I'm going to just pull, I think, some publication that was made by the USA. I'm going to just pull it and put it um, on this video. So, yes, you can. And you can just get all your details in soft copy. I think I, I, I must have directed you guys on how to do that in the um, videos. I think introduction to the stock exchange or the other of how to invest 
in shares in Uganda. So just check out that video and then you'll have a detailed explanation on how you can open a CSD account outside Uganda. But also this detail on the screen should be able to help. Next question. How do I earn from shares? So yes, this is a recap as well. You can earn from shares um, either through dividends. Dividends are distributions of profit to shareholders in a given entity or you can also earn from shares um, when the price that you've bought at is less than the price that you're going to sell at so that you make a profit yeah you buy at a lower price sell at a higher price that is how you make money from shares yeah so just two ways dividends and buying and selling next question what taxes will i be charged so the bit with Uganda is there is no capital gains if you're buying shares on a listed entity, like on the Uganda Securities Exchange. If you buy and sell, there is no capital gains tax, only for the listed entities. But then there is 10% um, and 15% withholding tax on the dividends that are going to be paid to you. So if they pay you um, 10,000 dividends at maybe end of quarter, end of year, mid year, whatever, before you get, um, the amount that you're going to get in the bank is going to be that amount less 10% withholding tax goes to URA. So the next question, um, if I invest 100,000 shillings, how much do I earn in a year? You know, um, I think people ask this so much because that is the minimum amount that they were buying at. So for the MTN IPO, each share is... 200 shillings and then you are required to buy a minimum of 500 shares which comes with 100k so someone is asking if i invest my 100k how much am i going to get after a year so there is no guaranteed amount that you're going to get after a year because it is a stock exchange like it can go up and down the like the prices keep moving up and down but then if we're to base on prior results, um, I was looking at the EPS that EPS is earnings per share. I was looking at the earnings per share that was published for 2020 and it was 14 shillings per share. So if by any chance MTN manages to maintain the same EPS, that means if you own 500 shares, you just get that 500 times the 14 and then that will be 7k made in a year so the 7k 7000 shillings is how much your shares have earned in that year assuming the APS has remained the same but that does not mean that that is the money that comes to you the only money that comes to a shareholder are the dividends the earnings do not come to you so the company can decide whether to pay out dividends or whether to just re-inject the money into the business to grow and all the different sorts of things that the board will have decided on. So again, based on prior ratios, if by any chance MTN decides to maintain the same dividend per share that was made in the prior year, I was looking at 2020 and they made a dividend per share of 40.65 shillings. So if you have 500 shares, that means that dividends that will be coming to in 2021 assuming the same dividend per share that would be the 500 multiply that by the 40 so that would mean you would get um something around 20k in dividends but remember in the year 2021 m10 has already made an interim dividend around august to the shareholders that were there as at that point so whichever dividends that are declared at the end of the year will have to take into account that old dividend that was paid out so there will be some proration of some sort don't mean that you'll get the 14 shillings per share that i'm assuming so yeah as an investor in the stock market it's not a must that you're going to get any sort of income you just have to pray that the company performs well and then the value of your shares will either go up or maybe they can declare a dividend and then yeah that's how you keep earning then the next question is can i use my shares as collateral you see, um, when these different companies were, um, were going out to market these shares, they included this collateral issue as a key pro to the investing in these MTN shares. But then um, I think I appreciated APSA for coming out and they were like, guys, we are not taking your share certificates as collateral because they are so risky. Like the market can go 
in whichever direction. And then the bank, now assuming the share price drops to, to certain shillings per share, the shares that you bought are 200 shillings and now they are worth 10 shillings per share and you got a loan using the share certificate see there is a big exposure to the bank so it's not a must that your lender will be able to accept your share certificate especially in this uganda market it will be so hard for you to get a loan using that share certificate so think twice if you're putting your whole life savings in the stock market you may not be able to do much our next question um are there bonus shares Yes, there are bonus shares. That's some interesting bit about this IPO. So who is eligible for these bonus shares? When I was looking at the prospectus, I noticed that, realized that if you're a Ugandan individual, you're entitled to five shares for every 100 shares that you've bought. So if you buy 500 shares, that would mean 25 shares extra, just because you're Ugandan. And then on top of that, if you're Ugandan and you buy shares using the MTN Momo or there's a certain USSD code I think that was put out by MTN. I'll try to get it and put for you on the screen. If you use that code and you buy the shares, you'll, you'll be able to get an extra five shares for every 100 shares that you buy. So if you buy 500 shares, you'll be able to get five times the extra, like in the bits of 100, that will be 25 extra shares for the 500. So if you're Ugandan and then you buy using MTN Momo, you'll be able to get 50 shares for every 500 that you buy. So you get 50 extra shares than 25 because you're Ugandan individual and then the 25 because you've bought using your MTN line. I'll get a snippet of how it appears in the, in the prospectus. You realize that even institution investors have some bonus shares and East African individuals like kenya i don't know if randa is allowed to invest in this but i saw it being marketed in kenya so you'll be able to also have extra shares for every 100 that you buy so the minimum of 500 everyone is literally going to have an extra 25 shares free of charge which is exciting like who gives out free shares it's so rare to find so this is a great chance if you are to invest i'm not saying go ahead and invest then our next question, are MTN shares overvalued? Guys, I know this has been giving headache to so many people. Um, you've seen all sorts of valuations on the internet. Um, I think there was um, one interesting one I saw is where one used, um, I think, a nav per share, but then they based on prior numbers. So, mm, yeah, someone can be right and correct, but the only issue with valuing using one formula is you're always going to get biased so the best way to make a valuation is get um like three approaches so that your determined price is in a range rather than a point price that will be a good basis for valuation that's why that's why when you when you're doing an investment evaluation you never focus on using just one ratio supposed to use different ratios so that you understand what these ratios are communicating to you and then yeah you'll be able to get a range in which this price falls so i was um so i was doing my research of course over the internet and i i noticed a valuation that was made by a group of cfas and i respect them i respect their profession so they were able to determine a price of about 180 shillings to 218 that was their estimate depending on the number of factors of course the a number of assumptions that they took into account um i'll be able to pull it out for you if i get a chance to or or else i'll just link for you a link in the description to look at that valuation report but here they estimated that a price of MTN is between 180 shillings and 218. And being the skeptical me, I would go with the 180 shillings. So if we're to base on that, yes, the shares might be overvalued. But remember I told you they're giving you bonus shares free of charge. That means if you're to get the effective cost of these shares, you'll roughly fall into a lower value like the effective cost of the shares because you're paying 
So you're buying 500 shares, but at a price of 200 shillings per share. But remember, they're giving you 50 bonus shares if you're Ugandan and then using your MTN line, which everyone should do if you want to get the best value for your money. So the effective cost of that is going to be lower than what others are going to have. So if you're to ask me, mm, yes, the price might be lower, the actual value of the shares might be lower, but it's not significantly low to cause an alarm. I don't think it is. Then jumping on to our next question, when can I sell? So unfortunately, if you're someone who invested school fees money that you expected to get back in one month, you cannot sell within the IPO period, but you'll be able to sell when the company gets listed. That is after 6th December. So as long as you check the listed entities and you're seeing MTN among the listed entities, then you can buy and sell in whichever way you want. But right now, you cannot sell. You have to wait until all the shares have been allotted and a price determined. That is the rolling price as at that point in time. It won't remain 200. It may not remain 200, yeah? So it may change, might go down, might go up. And the market is usually not favorable for people who want to stay in for a very short period of time. It will favor more those who, are, who want to be in for like 10 years, 20 years, yeah. If you're someone who wanted to be in for one month, you might be shocked that the price will fall significantly after the IPO date. Yeah, I'm just preparing you for shocks that are coming. And then someone asked, where are these extra shares coming from, the ones that they're selling to Ugandans? Where did they come from? So if you look at the IPO, you realize that the old holding had MTN International at having 21 point something million shares at and their ownership was at around 96 percent and then Charles Mbire had that 892 millions and his holding was 3.986 percent so after the offer you realize that MTN International's portion is going down from 96 percent to 76 percent and then Charles Mbire is, is maintaining his portion and his number of shares are also remaining standard, meaning MTN International is selling part of their holding of the old 21. They're reducing their holding to 17. So the difference is what they are selling to the public. The new shareholders that are coming in, they are going to get this 20% holding that MTN International is selling. So that is where the new shares are coming from. Then jumping on to our next question, is MTN Mobile Money part of the listing entity? You see, this question came about because people don't like reading. There is, um, so they put up a prospectus. It has all the details about MTN. It has the, their mission, the projects that they're doing, what, where they see themselves in the next five years. <laughs> so, um, if you manage to take a chance to go through that prospectus, there is even a summarized one, the abridged prospectus. You would have realized that this is a subsidiary of MTN Uganda, so it definitely is part of the LISA entity. So the structure of entities is there is um, a mother company, then there is a subsidiary. So whatever money the subsidiary makes, if you're 100% owned by this parent company, the money that you're making is flowing through directly to the parent company. If there is another company that is co-owning you, then the, like they're going to split whatever money you're making between themselves, depending on the percentage ownership they all have in you. So MTN Mobile Money is a subsidiary of MTN Uganda. So yes, if MTN Uganda is getting listed, that means whichever money is coming from MTN Mobile Money, it's part of MTN Uganda. But then still, if you read the prospectus, you've, you'd have realized that there is a um, proposed restructure that MTN is going to do. And this, if you're to look at all the um, flags, everything is pointing towards mobile money. So I'm thinking mobile money might be structured out of MTN Uganda in the coming future. And then it will be part of MTN International just for efficiencies and synergies and all those sorts of things because I think you must have seen a headline of where M10 Mobile Money is getting into the Nigeria economy. 
So if you're an investor, all those things are supposed to trigger something in your mind and you're like, okay, what is going to be the next move for this company? So assuming if that entity is structured out of MTN Uganda, what are the revenues going to be looking like? How, like, what does that mean to the share price? You should be able to respond to all those questions if you're investing in MTN. So I'll leave those as open questions for you. Make sure you respond to them before you invest in MTN. The next question is, can a company or a circle buy shares in MTN? Yes, as long as you have that documentation, you have, I think they're called memorandums of association. Like, okay, you're supporting document, your registration documents for your SAC and your company. Yes, if you have those, you, you'll be able to open an SCD account and then you'll be able to have a bank account. So as long as you have a bank account that is registered in your company name, the details you submitted will be the same details that are required here. So yes, you can invest, you can buy the shares. Then our last question. I'm sorry if this has gone on forever, but yeah, we're final at the end. So our last question is, can I buy shares for my child? Hey guys, I don't understand what would make someone buy shares for their child. I wouldn't advise you to buy shares in your child's name. Yes, it is possible. If you want to do it, go ahead and do it. It's your money. But I wouldn't advise you to do it. And it's a long I think it will be a very long explanation for this segment of the video. So I'm going to leave this hanging. I will definitely come back to it at some point in time. So if I dare forget, please always remind me to talk about this. Yes, there are all things about estate planning and all those kinds of things. But I feel there is a certain checklist that you need to take through before you start to invest in your children's names. Yeah, think twice before you do that. So thank you so much, guys, for joining me on today's segment. I really appreciate. Yeah, keep the comments coming. If I've left out any question that you think I should respond to, then feel free to put in the comment section. I'll be responding to it. And yeah, feel free to join me next. If you find this helpful, like, comment, let me know what you think. Subscribe if you're new here. We're so much excited to have you on board. And yeah, see you next time, guys. Bye.